So today we're going to be making these super cute Mandalorian inspired Mythosaur pendants. So let me show you how I made them. So I went ahead and used the Sculpey Souffle pack I bought and the silver is going to be what we're going to use. And then some pendant backs. You can get these off of Amazon. I'll try to put a link in the description for you guys. You can buy this stuff to make it if you want or you can just find it at any local store. So you're going to need your clay to activate it or prime it or whatever and then you're gonna make a kind of like y chalice shape you're gonna pinch kind of the bottom to get you know a little fatter top and like a thinner bottom and then you're gonna take that bottom and you're just gonna kind of pull it down until you get the correct rate ratio for the mouth versus the head the top of the skull because the mythosaur has a very unique skull shape with like a very long mouth. And then I I realized if I just stick the pendants on the back, they sometimes fall off. So I try to put whatever my pendants are, I try to wrap the clay kind of around it before I like get into the sculpt. That way it stays on, it doesn't fall off at any point during when it's being worn. So once I have that completely wrapped around the back... Which will take a while for you to seal it properly, but once you have it sealed, no cracks or anything, you're going to push your clay back into the correct shape. Remember, we want a 3D skull. And make sure there's no cracks on the back. Smooth out, smooth it out the best you can. Uh, don't worry about fingerprints for right now. We can rub them out later. Right now, it's just getting rid of any cracks, making sure that everything's a smooth, seamless piece. And that the shape is correct. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of focus to get this part done. Um... But yeah, and this is sped up about 1.6. Um, Y'all can slow it down if you want, but I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory and you just keep working at it until it looks right. So this is what we have now. That's what we're going for. That's one's already sculpted and done. Um, we'll, I'm going to show you how to get that, but right now that's what we have. And don't worry, it, it will get there. Just keep working. Okay, so... Then once you have that basic skull shape, you're going to take your leftover piece of clay that you had divvied up for the skull and you're going to split it in half and you're going to roll those halves into balls and these are going to be the horns that are going to protrude out of the side of the skull of your little mythosaur. And so once you have those balls and they're about the same size, just roll, roll, roll. And then you're going to start rolling them into like a cone shape. And then after you get it rolled to a certain thinness, you're going to go about halfway from when it starts getting thinner. And you're going to curve it a little bit more inward. Let me show you what that should look like. Because it kind of goes out and then it comes back down and around. And it's okay if it's not perfect because we still need to attach it to the skull. And I've got, um, you, you, I'm using one of my sculpting tools, but you can use a nail daughter. Or honestly, you can just take a toothpick and kind of bang it on the counter to blunt the edge and roll it to round it off and you can use that as well you can always also roll rip off a little tiny piece of tin foil and roll it into a tiny bowl and stick it on the edge of a toothpick and that should work too for you um whatever works for you you know Alrighty, and then once you have those on you're going to try to make them as symmetrical as possible but remember, horns on wild creatures are rarely ever completely 100% symmetrical. They're usually a little bit wonky. So it's okay if it's not perfect. Remember, this is based on the skull of a living thing or what was once a living thing. So, you know, it can be a little bit wonky. But you still want them to be as symmetrical as possible. You know, just they don't have to be perfect. I, I can make them perfect, but... Well, as close to perfect as you can get. Anyway, the, the point remains. Just work on your horns, work on your skull, make sure the proportions look right. And then once everything looks the way you want it to look, you've got your base done. And then once your base is done, it's time to give it a face. So remember, this is a warrior's necklace, so it's going to be a little banged up. You're going to have some cracks. You're going to have some rubs in there. So you're going to find where about a third way down into the skull, you're going to take your tip and you're just going to angle it inward. And then I'm in room that he has a mythosaurs have very jagged eye sockets. So you're just going to kind of ram it in there and kind of wiggle it back and forth. 
This is me trying to get a good camera angle and also do this very delicate sculpting with only one hand trying to film. Uh, this is why I don't usually film a lot of my more complicated projects because it's just it's so hard to film while I'm doing this. But oh well. I'm just filming this one to show you guys how to do it, the basics. And then you're going to kind of smooth the jagged edges back down because remember it's still supposed to be a round skull. So you're just going to work that eye socket until it's in the shape that you want. And then you're just going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, don't worry about fingerprints for right now because we can smooth them out in a minute. But I'm just doing the same thing on the other side and I'm just kind of working it down and then smushing it to make the edges even. Not worrying about fingerprints for this moment. Doesn't matter. Alrighty, and then once you have your jagged little eye sockets, the eye sockets are in like a really weird shape, so kind of think like a, a sort of half rainbow, but with like jagged edges on the bottom. I don't know, it's like a scalloped weird eye socket thing. Alright, and then you're going to put in the little nostrils and you pull down. I actually thought I was recording, but I didn't have the record button on, so anyway, I'm showing you guys the strokes I did to get this sh these shapes in there, and that'll give you that face. Okay, once you have your little mythosaur bases done, you're going to put them in the oven as per your clay's baking instructions. I'm using Sculpey Primo and su or Souffle, which bakes at 275, and then it's 30 minutes per, per uh, half an inch of thickness. Um, I usually just do an hour for pieces about this size, but you can do more or less depending on your experience and what you want. Just be careful not to burn it and check on your pieces about halfway through the cooking time to make sure that they're doing all right. Okay, so I filled one in with black already, just so you guys could see, but after you pull them out of the oven, you're gonna let them cool. And then I just have a little bit of bl cheap black acrylic paint here. Well, not dirt cheap, but you know what I mean. It's not like fan anything fancy, it doesn't have to be. And then you're just gonna start filling in all the cracks and crevices that you made, kind of just giving it a little bit more depth. And this is what it'll look like after you're done filling it all in. Like, look how cool that looks. That is just so epic looking. Love it so much. I love my little mythosaurs. Alrighty. And then the final step, and this one's optional, is to coat it in UV resin. This helps protect it from the elements and make it a little bit more durable and also gives it a nice finish. And this is what they look like all done. Your little mythosaur pendants. Um, there's three here. One is for me. One will be donated to the Carolina Waterfall Rescue. Link in the description if you'd like to try to bid on that for charity. And then the last one will be on my website to buy if you'd like to buy one because you're too lazy to make it. Okay, bye! bye.